Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Nazia Iqbal and here's a look at the stories for the day. take flights to cut short the travel time and that is why on-time performance is one of the main pillars of the airline industry. The country's largest airline, Indigo, was the most punctual airline in 10 out of the 12 months last year. But this year, it has been besieged by a set of problems which affected its on-time performance. While Air India, under the new owner and CEO, is trying hard to make a mark it has left Indigo behind in punctuality. So how did Air India manage this turnaround? Let's find out. It is not an easy task to manage a fleet of over 290 aircraft. One flight delay leaves behind a trail of delays and cancellations. But the country's largest airline, Indigo, is known to pull off the difficult feat. In 10 of the 12 months last year, Indigo had the best on-time performance of any scheduled domestic airline at four metro airports, namely Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Delhi and Mumbai. In the months of April and November 2021, the two months where Indigo was not leading that year, it was still trailing at second and third positions. Being on time is one of Indigo's three main focus areas, the other two being low fares and delivering a hassle-free experience. But this year, it was on the top in only two of the first nine months of the year. On the other hand, Air India, which was previously faring poorly in this metric, has consistently ranked above Indigo in July, August and September consecutively. Air Asia India and full-service carrier Vistara the other Tata Group-owned airlines have been topping the table in these three months. A data analytics-driven app developed by TCS is helping AirAsia India improve its punctuality score. It topped on-time performance among major airlines for five consecutive months since April. As per the latest data available from DGCA, in September, Vistara emerged as India's top on-time airline, recording an OTP rate of 91%. It was followed by AirAsia India at 89.8%, and Air India at 87.1%. At fourth was Indigo, with 84.1% of its flights being on time. Compare this with April, when Air India's OTP at four metro airports was 81.8%, putting it at the sixth spot. While 90.1% of Indigo's flights flew on time in April, this fell to 80.8% in July, amid an unrest by some of its cabin crew and technicians over salaries. This is also when Air India started to steal a march over Indigo. The Tata Group reportedly identified on-time performance as a primary improvement goal at Air India since its acquisition toward the end of January. The Tatas roped in Singapore Airlines Group veteran Campbell Wilson, who took over as the airline CEO in June to lead its turnaround plan. Time which is there of the duration of flight on your ticket is usually door closed to door open. So that, that's your commercial block time which is defined. And the actual block time for operations is your chocks on and chocks off. Now, it's very important that your door closed time and your chocks of time are as minimal as possible for you to be efficient as an airline. It's how fast can you board your total book load for that flight and make sure everybody's boarded, seated, the cargo's loaded, the doors are closed right at the time, which is your door close or the time that's published on your ticket. Now, many times we have seen that an aircraft might land in a destination airport before our published arrival time. Now, that is obviously on account of several factors. Uh, you know, if you take a delay on, uh, on departure, then the pilot can obviously fly a bit more faster. Or you just get blessed with a gorgeous 50 to 70 knot tailwind. Everything boils down to building efficiency and improving efficiency cyclically. I mean, it's not a software. It's the way you function as a process. Your, your terminal operations is a system. Your ground crew is a system. 
every all of those systems need to function like main gears in a big gearbox air india has reportedly set up a cross functional team to comprehensively assess the upcoming flight schedule for the winter season ceo campbell wilson said air india has invested in it systems to improve the capability of aircraft predictive maintenance and wants to ensure the right systems are in place to monitor the turnaround times of aircraft spooked by air india's recent rise indigo has asked its cabin crew to make some drastic changes in flight management to improve performance One of the instructions is to close the cabin door within 60 seconds of the last passenger entering the plane although the passenger may still be in the process of settling down in the cabin further the company has asked the pilots to reach the airports at least 75 minutes before the scheduled departures of their flights they must be seated inside the plane 35 minutes before departure indigo has also increased the pace of hiring ground staff that was laid off during the covid-19 pandemic now air india as we know had tremendous lot of problems with their airport terminal operations because of ai sats and uh, there were a lot of steps that they had to take to really get the air india sats airport handling team to improve their efficiency and a lot of those issues which with air india that was pretty common was last minute change of gates they air india has actually sorted that out and built efficiencies managing otp for an airline like indigo is far more complex indigo is a low cost carrier their turnaround time is half of a of an air india so which means in 30 minutes they got the, they got to get the aircraft clean fuel to load the cargo and and baggage and luggage load passengers and close so when you're running an lcc your otp might fall a few notches because you know an air india looks at a turnaround time of 45 minutes to 1 hour an indigo is 300 aircraft plus so so i'd probably say an indigo at fourth is as good as an air india at first with a with a 45 to 1 hour minute turnaround time i would i really wouldn't want to bring vistara also into the bracket because one is they're ridiculously small and you have an air asia which is even more smaller in terms of quantum and operations for them to be uh, otp uh, at the first or second position is obviously it's a no brainer At the end of the day, OTP is not just an airline's responsibility. Airport operators in conjunction with security personnel can ensure better management of crowds and minimize the time it takes to check in. For example, higher capacity and faster clearance at immigration counters could increase efficiency at the terminal side. This will complement the efforts of airlines to improve their on-time performance. world over are also working to cut the emission a un body recently agreed on an aspirational goal for the aviation sector under which emissions will be brought down to net zero by 2050 meanwhile efforts are on to cut on road emissions to switch mobility the electric vehicle making subsidiary of ashok leland has been rolling out electric buses for the world market it also kicked off in india in october last year Business Standards Shine Jacob caught up with its CEO Mahesh Babu to know more about the company's future plans. Let's listen in. Good morning. Welcome to the Business Standard Show. Um, so, uh, to start with, uh, sir, uh, what is the role of uh, switch in Ashok Leyland's shift towards electric vehicles? Yeah, absolutely, Shine. I think uh, uh, firstly, switch is uh, um, positioned as a global company. Uh, we are headquartered in UK, and uh, uh, we have uh, offices in, let's say, Chennai. Now we have in Spain and other locations. Uh, the intent of switch in the global is switch as a Uh, vision of democratizing zero carbon mobility so our intention is to bring globally people to public transport in electric mobility and these two areas we will do it both on passenger as well as uh, um, um, as well as in the goods segment so we have taken two sectors which is the bus segment and we have also taken the light commercial vehicle up to 7.5 ton and then we said uh, switch will focus on electrification across the globe so we are looking at uk we are looking at spain we are looking at middle east we are looking at southeast asia india africa 
and other countries where we want to participate in these two segments and scale it up globally. Uh, so this is the main intention and uh, switch being a subsidy of Ashok Leyland uh, uh, will have a lot of synergies and support from the company, from the platform, from the uh, buying powers and the asset of manufacturing channel and many more. So that is the big advantage for us while we are a startup uh, like just 18 to 20 months old. Uh, but uh, we have uh, we have leveraged Ashok Leyland's uh, what I would say asset significantly uh, in the past two years and then we are trying to get uh, the maximum uh, asset utilization to get the best products to our customers. How many buses did you supply in the Indian market so far and how do you see the growth potential? We, um, we had about uh, uh, 100 buses at the start of the year supplied in the past four years but 2013 till now. Uh, um, so uh, we have been working. Uh, see, th there are two portion states. One is the India portion, and another is the UK portion. You all know that we have about 100 electric buses running in London. In India, uh, we actually kicked off uh, one year back. Last uh, last October is the formation of Switch India, and then we have started. So when we made Switch India, we had about 65 buses on road and we were delivering the first 40 last financial year. So we were about 105 buses on road. Uh, now uh, we have about 600 plus orders this year. So we are kind of uh, last year delivery of 60 buses to 600 buses is the a journey we are taking. It's a very substantial task and we have uh, the team is working hard to get uh, get to that level of growth in this financial year. Seeing uh, uh, the upcoming tenders by the government, mega tenders and all that the government had announced, so how are you looking at it? I think firstly we have to give credit to the government of India and CSL for coming up with some uh, fantastic futuristic uh, tenders. I think India has committed toward net zero by 2070. There is a lot of work happening in this decade up to 2030 on electrification and uh, solar and many renewable energy action both in mobility and energy. I think that is putting up uh, putting a lot of uh, uh, industry investments and actions towards sustainable mobility, which is the vision of uh, Switch as well. So we are able to uh, closely work and I appreciate CESL taking the next tender, which is a, a draft is almost out for another 5,400 buses. So, uh, and uh, this is just a start. I believe that every year we have a potential to adapt and, uh, and uh, do about uh, Five to ten thousand buses going forward. That is a very very tall order, and I would say that many developed countries, including Germany, last year have sold only five hundred electric buses, but India have registered more than thousand, and this year it's going to be much more than two thousand buses in the market. Uh, when you look at Swiss, there are two sides to it. One is the Indian growth roadmap and the global expansion. Uh, so, uh, how this global expansion will be paced? What will be the strategy going ahead, especially with the uh, current uh, sort of crisis that the international markets are seeing? India is doing extremely well in the turbulent situation globally. Uh, Europe has an energy crisis. There is a war heading towards it. And UK had a leadership change and we, we are seeing a lot of flip flopping of the policies. So, but I believe it will get stabilized because if you look at switch, uh, we are in UK. We have said we will be in Europe through Spain. Uh, we are looking at African countries. We are looking at uh, Middle East. We are looking at Southeast Asia. In fact, we have sent a bus to Japan to explore possibilities there and we are talking about Australia. So we are going to be present on a long term globally. Uh, now, uh, having said that, uh, uh, each country and each region will have challenges at multiple point of time. Uh, so we'll have to work around it and uh, take specific action uh, related to what's happening in geopolitics and uh, uh, scale up or scale down the business plan accordingly. But uh, on a long term, we believe that uh, the markets will come back after the turbulent times are over. Coming to another side of it, what will financial investors for raising funds? How much are you going to raise? What is the status of that? Uh, since the market in India and the EV is uh, futuristic, uh, I don't see any issue in financing either from the group or we are getting a strategic partner who will come and work with us uh, for for uh, uh, for scaling up the business globally. So we are working with partners who will invest on it and it is as per the plan. Uh, if everything goes well before end of the financial year, we will have all the partners in place. 
So we talked about totally about 250 to 300 million dollars between switch and home and uh, the plan is that and we are uh, working around it. electric buses, India is also moving towards indigenization of the defense sector. In a volatile market, defense stocks have witnessed a dream run as most of the counters delivered triple digit returns in the current fiscal year. As the government's indigenization theme gains steam, will the sector have more legs to rally in the near term or consolidation is likely? Here's a report. past few years, India has been trying to reduce its dependence on defense imports through Make in India and Atma Nirbhar Bharat initiatives. In line with the current policy, the government recently unveiled fourth positive indigenization list of 101 defense items, which included products across aerospace, missiles, naval weapons, armored vehicles, and more. With this list, around 411 defense platforms and 1,238 defense subsystems and components will be procured locally. Analysts believe this indigenization of these items will increase participation from private players, MSMEs and startups. If we look at the primary markets, a strong response was seen in the public issue of DCX Systems, a defense system integration company. Retail investors remained at the forefront since day one and bought over 37 times of the issue. Grey markets suggest bumper listing of DCX systems at 287 rupees per share, 40% higher on the upper price band. Meanwhile, shares of listed defense entities too have seen a dream rally in the current fiscal year as majority of the counters delivered triple-digit returns. Among the lot, shares of Mazagon Dog, Garden Reach, Data Pattern, Cochin Shipyard, Bharat Dynamics, Hindustan Aeronautics sold to 255% so far in FY23. In comparison, Frontline Indices, Nifty 50 and the S&P BSE Sensex gained over 3% each during the same period. Does this mean that the dream rally has run its course or is more upside likely on cards? We have been holding a bullish view on the defence sector as a whole uh, since the government announced its union budget uh, for FY22-23. Now, the government increased its uh, allocation to defence and that was a major uh, uh, push towards the uh, defence uh, sector and uh, producing defence goods within the country. So, since the budget, government has taken, taken various steps to promote uh, defence sector uh, and manufacturing within the country and apart from that, uh, even the hostilities which are growing amongst nations across the world is also acting as a major uh, uh, tailwind for the sector. So, overall, defence is a great uh, long-term mega trend opportunity for Indian investors and uh, there are a lot of uh, exciting uh, opportunities in the defence space. Analysts also warn about possible consolidation across defence names in the near term as valuations skyrocket to peak levels. All the leading defence stocks have witnessed a splendid run in the last one year, driven by indigenization, increasing order intake, which has led to rising expectations of growth and profitability. We believe these talks could continue to do well as the government increases its focus on encouraging local manufacturing by prohibiting import of more and more defense related items. Currently, the valuations for these talks are at peak levels as they have all made all time highs recently. 
so the valuations factor in the order into intake guidance and profitability expectations for fi23 and a year thereafter however we believe at current levels too there is a potential upside in the long term as the defense opportunity is huge and sustainable over a long period of time but there could be consolidation for the time being and the stocks may trade range bound till they finish fi23 and provide fresh guidance for the coming years on the positive side any large order win by the defense players in the coming months could give sentimental boost to these stocks our preferred bets in this space are hindustan aeronautics and bharat electronics given their large order book which provides revenue visibility of more than 3 years healthy cash balance and their efforts to focus on non defense and exports too as regards today domestic markets will react to the us federal reserve's rate action besides quarterly earnings season will continue to hog limelight as companies like hdfc adani enterprises vodafone idea bank of india hpcl coromandel international among others will report the july september quarter results on thursday BBC report claimed that the UK gave a secret package of 6 million pound to Ukraine to help it fight cyber attacks allegedly emanating from Russia. As the war escalates, there is a turf to defend in the virtual world too. The number of cyber attacks have jumped many fold across the globe, and not just the governments and organizations, people too have been falling prey. And phishing is one of the most common forms of cyber threat. Our next report offers a peek into the dark world of phishing and tells about the ways to prevent it. Have you ever received a suspicious email asking to click a link to reset your password or a phone call seeking your bank account details? Then it might be a suspected phishing attempt. As more and more users adopt the digital payments route, cyber crimes are also on the rise. One of the common forms of cyber attack where people are increasingly vulnerable is a phishing attack. Phishing is a fraudulent practice where cyber attackers pose as a legitimate entity and communicate via an email or a phone call to gain sensitive and confidential information such as passwords, credit card details, etc. Both individuals and organizations may be vulnerable to phishing attacks and it can target hundreds of victims at any given point of time. Now, how do these attacks work? Typically, there are multiple ways through which phishing attempts are made. Usually, the attacker who pretends to be from a legitimate organization sends an email or SMS which includes a malicious link that redirects the user to a fake website. The fake website is set up in such a way that the user is tricked into giving personal and financial information. Cyber hackers gather the victim's information such as personal interests, work history, and other activities for personalized and believable communication. A phishing email could be as simple as this. Now, what do you do to prevent such attacks? Even though phishing attempts have a sophisticated way of communication, we can always pick up some clues and signs. by being attentive to the details for instance typical phishing attempts have misspelt or suspicious urls the email has a sense of urgency and requests you to verify personal information or an sms that asks for confidential information such as credit card details bank account details or other sensitive passwords users can also install safety filters into devices and systems such as antivirus software spam filters or anti phishing toolbars people can also maintain internet hygiene by regularly updating browsers changing passwords frequently and blocking unnecessary pop-ups i'm back by the nation's trusted bank sbi the bank of to every indian Cybersecurity researchers recently unearthed a new phishing scam in which fraudsters were sending emails to corporate employees pretending to be their bosses to get funds. 
Well, that's all we have for you today. We will be back with more news and analysis in our next episode. Stay tuned and thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.